Spice Drum fans, welcome back to the channel. Today, I am going to be talking about this Kane Rock. Let's give you a close up on that one, just that one on its own. Kane Rock. Now, uh, before we go any further, I want to clarify one thing before we dive into what this is, because it'll be a natural flow. So, I, I said something on a video, I, I won't say which video, but I said something on a video uh, a couple of weeks ago um, that kind of got a few comments and hang on a minute, it's like, you're being hypocritical, what, what's going on here? Look, this is where my head is for where the spiced rums that I want to feature on this channel, if I'm going to feature spiced rums. I am, because I do love spiced rums from time to time. Um, I love both, I, I, love, I can appreciate all, but the direction I want to head in and this is for all the spiced rum brands that are out there as well that are thinking, hang on, I, I want to send, can I send you some? The, the direction I want to head with spiced rums is if you're not going to let me know the distilleries or where the rum has come from, I don't really want to know about it. In previous kind of directions, I was, I was sort of like, you know, proper spices. Like, is it real spices? Is it dropper bottles? And, and all that kind of stuff. And that gets into a minefield all on its own because you have got proper spiced rum brands using effectively, let's just call them dropper bottles of flavour compounds, essentially. And you get into that whole argument of what's real and what's fake and what's uh, what's um, what, whatever the term is they use, like natural flavours. There we go. Um, and there's a whole rabbit hole I've been down there. So that's very hard because it's hard to distinguish between someone using real ginger and real ginger that has been cultivated into a flavour compound compared to fake ginger that has been chemically processed. So without going down that route, and I can kind of I can kind of tell that, I can kind of gauge that from the brands. What I want to make abundantly clear is that I only want to feature brands that have distilled the rums themselves. Okay? Now, you might be looking at this thinking, hang on a minute, here's some, that's not quite right. Now, there's a caveat. There's a little clause that I'm going to put in here as well, because I can I can justify this. I don't want to, you know, if they're, look, I, I firmly believe the future of rum is with rum. I love spiced rum. Spiced rum brands will come and go. I'm really, really sorry, but they will. The, the market will flood. It'll be exactly the same as the gin liqueurs, the flavoured gins and all that. The cream of the crop will rise to the top. They will stay, which will be 5% of the industry, maybe 10% if you're extremely lucky, but you're talking low numbers. It's a trend. They will come and go. They'll realise the product is actually not that great because there's no backbone. There's no authenticity to the actual rum. It's just a rum, a generic rum that they bought and added their own flavours to, which at the moment, even, even well, okay, I've been in a spiced rum journey for, Christ, 10, 12 years now. I know spiced rum's inside out, or did do. Um, there, there, there's no, it's nowhere new you can really go unless you start distilling your own rum. So therefore, it just be if you're not, therefore it just becomes a generic rum that you spiced up with ginger, vanilla, cinnamon, nutmeg, insert other thing here. You know, it's going to be those. It's not going to be different. So that is the direction. If you distill from scratch your rum, but you've produced a spiced rum from that, that's cool. Fair game. Let, let's bring that. Let's showcase that because you've got the art there. But if it's an imported rum that you're not even going to say comes from DDL, from Trinidad, TDL, from wherever, if it's just generic Caribbean rum, I don't really want to know because we know full well that some of them will last. The bigger brands with the marketing budgets will last and the smaller brands won't. So harsh reality, but that's where we are. Now, you'd be looking at that and some brands will be looking at that or thinking, hang on a minute, you've got Kane Rock, Rock in front of you. What's going on? That's just another one. Now, I can justify this because Kane Rock, I, I'm just going to, I know it's going to drop today so i'm just going to call it that plantation it is plantation plantation spice drum it's not it's maison ferrand okay it is maison ferrand are the parent company of plantation they've got loads of other brands as well um but my, you know so maison ferrand are the parent company of this now we know maison ferrand own wyrd west indian rum distillery in barbados we know maison ferrand part own national rums of jamaica so we can virtually pinpoint 
uh, where this rum has been made. You know, they, they part own the distillery or part own some of the distilleries. Let's put it like that. So we can kind of loosely run that. I love what Plantation do. Uh, I love what Plantation or Amazing Front do. Amazing, see, I told you. I, lo I love what they do. I love what they're about. You know, we've got the Order of the String and Discord community. I can't, in all consciousness, go on about Plantation Rum without not including plant, uh, Mason Front Kane Rock in this. So we've we've got authentic authenticity. We kind of we kind of do know where the rum has come from. We kind of do knows that do know that they use proper uh, flavors in this and not artificially produced chemical compounds. You know there is that proper. So that's the disclosure that I want to make before I get into this proper proper rum as near as damn it proper proper flavors and spices okay if you're coming at me with caribbean rum uh with dropper bottles and i and i can ask the questions to get where you, where you get your your flavors from then i don't think that is the future i need to be authentic to myself i need to be authentic to the rum community uh, because this whole, this, don't just see this as me doing the spiced rum. This bit, you know, this all links together with what I'm doing with the UK rums, the scratch distillery rums. Again, I'm not really focusing on rums in the UK that have imported uh, rum. And it, they, they kind of, got to be careful what I say here because there's some brands, Lost Years. Let's just take, take Lost Years. I love Lost Years. Lost Years are bringing in, and uh, what's the other one? Hattier's. Hattier's? Uh, had to, I think they're bringing in rums. They're opening up. It's like a blended rum from different parts of the world. That's absolutely fine. But when you are trying to say you're British rum, but you're actually just buying in rum from the Caribbean and maybe even not redistilling, maybe finishing it in the UK, maybe three months in a barrel in the UK, that is not British scratch rum. I'm all about scratch rum. All right, so hopefully that's kind of made it clear. Hopefully that's a little bit of an education for the Spiced Rum fans as well. And don't get me wrong, you know, I know there's a market for Bamboo. I know there's a market for Don Papa. I, I get all that and Dead Man's Fingers and all that. I'm not oblivious to that. I'm absolutely not oblivious, but I need to be true to rum and what's going to be here in 10 years' time. And now I can do my bit to help the rum community grow. And that is by only really featuring brands that distill rum themselves and Maison Ferrand do distill and buy up let's let's be honest they do buy up a lot of other rums from around the world but they do they are very much involved in the process so this is at the the loosest end of the spiced rum category that I will go the, the very very loosest end you know the you know we are virgin on probably not but because we can almost identify where this brand is they, they part own uh they part own the distillery that's why i've got it and i flipping well love it as well so what is cane rock cane rock is essentially jamaican rum um they haven't given the, the distillery so i'm not going to disclose, disclose the distillery um it's it's not appleton Let, let's, let's just say that it's not appleton distillery but there are there are and it's i don't think it's worthy park actually to be fair um but you know we you can narrow it down you can narrow down the distillery of where the, where this has come from as it says national rum to jamaica basically very very simple rum there might be other things going on but vanilla coconut ginger that's essentially what you've got proper ginger proper uh, vanilla proper um uh, what am I missing? Coconut going on there. On the nose, it just, if you've never had the fortune to try uh, Cut and Dry, which is Plantation's coconut rum that's only available in Barbados, this is the closest you'll ever get to Cut and Dry because on the nose, it is just coconut in abundance. It is it's just gorgeous, gorgeous coconut. Reminds me of Cut and Dry. My bottle, a little bottle of Cut and Dry is sort of tucked away down there. It is so reminiscent of that you've just got other flavors going on there uh i, I haven't got the price it's about 32 pounds in the uk it's more expensive than your um your dmfs and and all that other stuff but quite rightly so because we we it's proper decent rum at the end of the day not a blend of odds and sods caribbean rum you know that's the big distinguishment proper decent fantastic rum in here as opposed to mass produce 
yeah, rum. All right, that that's the big distinguish. So on the old taste, it's got a nice bit of sweetness to it, but again, not overly sweet. Sweetness scale out of twenty, as I try and make clear. Oh, the coconut, the fresh coconut in that. Um, where do we go in the sweetness scale? Sweetness scale, I kind of go maybe about a 12 out of 20 pushing it. Bear in mind, not many spiced rums are actually going to come under 10. There's a few that will do, but not many. Like, uh, let's let's be honest here, uh, Black Tears. Black Tears, I would potentially put at about an 8, a 7 or 8 out of 20. Um, and that's like really dry. There's obviously a little bit of sweetness in there to sort of marry spices. You can't have spices without sweetness. You can't because it just tastes wrong. Um, there's a few brands I'm looking at and there's a few coming up where I want to revisit. I want to be proved wrong. I haven't had them for a few years, so I'm going to be proved wrong. Um, no. Um, <laughs> so yeah, sweetness scale is probably about 12. It's nowhere near, again, I want to emphasize this sweetness. It's nowhere near Diplomatico. It's nowhere near Bamboo. It's nowhere near, um, what's the other one? Uh, Don Papa. It's nowhere near those sweetness levels. A very, very simple taste profile. Very, very simple. Coconut. Let's just break the coconut. Let's just break this, the flavor profile down into three. Coconut, 60% of the flavor. Ginger, probably 25% of the flavour. Vanilla, about 15% of the flavour. If my maths is correct, that's 100. Um, that's where I want it to go. It's undoubtedly coconut forward. Anyone that says they don't get coconut of that is quite, you need your taste buds like uh, refreshed because that is that. But it is... You know, it's not dominate. It's not like a Coco Cano. It's not dominated by coconut. There is other flavours in there, but coconut is the big flavour, if you know what I mean. I can't recall ever having Kang Rock with anything other than cola, Pepsi. Um, Because why would you? Uh, it's just fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Is that my favourite? I'm a little bit surprised. I'm a little bit shocked. My least favourite here is the ginger ale. I'm a massive ginger ale fan. That is how I would traditionally have it. If I'm going out, ginger ale. I just get bottles of ginger ale with any rum. It's what I drink. Um, my least favourite is that. My favourite, the beaver apple. That, wow, that is so good. That is flipping well, so good. Be, be, Beaver, because I'm all posh these days, but Belvoir in it. It's Belvoir, it's chaff. It's spelled Belvoir. Why would you say Beaver? But it's actually Beaver, but Belvoir. That's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. First place. Second place with the Pepsi. Third place with the ginger beer. And I'm talking, you know, if that's the 10 out of 10. Well, well let's, let's reserve judgment, because Stratford Soda might tip, topple this, uh, especially with the tropical coming up in a second. Um... But my top pick, very, very close second, very, very close third, long way off fourth. That's the best way I can describe that. I would quite happily drink uh, either of those three if you served them up to me. I, I, the, the apple is my favourite, but the Pepsi is really good as well. Stratford Soda, paid promotion part of the video. Would I feature these if they weren't paying me? No, I'm joking, I'm joking. Of course I would. Look, the whole reason I've entered into a paid partnership with um, Stratford Soda, Katie and Dan, because I flipping love the flavours. I flipping love what they're about. Um, four flavours. Your citrus, your tropical, your hedgerow, your spiced. Low in sugar, low in carbonation. They don't make me burp. I, I'm terrible now that I've got into my mid-40s, like gassy drinks. I love ginger ale, but it just makes me burp quite a lot. And it's an uncomfortable feeling. So these are proper natural fruit juice flavours in there. You've got the citrus, which is the long daiquiri, the tropical pineapple and coconut, the hedgerow, like blackberry and rose, and the spiced cinnamon forward with a hint of ginger underneath it. So with this, where do I go? There's one flavour here 
that is like a seven out of ten and like all right six out of ten the rest are wow love them i love the citrus the citrus long daiquiri stunning um oh, almost my favorite almost almost my favorite that's my favorite oh my god pineapple coconut with that stands to reason coconut vanilla ginger oh my god just line me up this all day long nothing else. i don't need sugar i don't need anything don't need a wedge of lime and that is the best combo that's fantastic the sweetness the little bit of extra sweetness in that rum just brings everything you want to the party in that drink. That is flipping fantastic. Oh, what? I just want to stop there. Um, hands down. Hands down the winner by my... Uh, don't get me wrong. That beaver apple was phenomenal. That's next level. Next level. The hedgerow, as I would expect, it, I, <laughs> I always say it's not my favourite. Uh, but then quite often wins <laughs> these tastings and like, oh, that works. This works, but not quite where I want it to be. But let's face it, blackberry and rose is not flavours that you'd expect to go with coconut, cinnamon and ginger. Coconut, vanilla, ginger. Um, but it's decent. You know, I wouldn't turn it away. I'd drink it. The spiced is another great one as well. This is why this is why I love this brand so much. Because I I have got a little bit of a sweet tooth. Sometimes, you know, if I'm drinking a bone dry rum, sometimes I do want a little bit of sweetness with him. But when you have a rum like that, that's not overly sweet at all, but has got a little bit of sweetness, Jesus, these these are just next level. That line me up all day. I don't know why I've never tasted that before, but all day long. Don't get me wrong, I love I love the Pepsi, I love the Beaver Apple. That takes the crown all day long. Um, Nick, Jay, anyone from my identity that watches that, seriously, hook yourselves up with that. Make that your signature serve 